Now from your futures wheel, you'll see a whole range of potential challenges and problems that exist in order to progress from one effect to the next effect or progress into the future along various trend lines. So these problems are generally classed into three types. There are what we call tame problems, which essentially we know how to solve. We're in the process of solving them. There's no real challenge around it. We just haven't necessarily gotten around to doing it yet, but we're on the way to doing it. Then there are what are called difficult problems or crisis problems. Now, these are ones that essentially we haven't applied the resources or the time and effort to solving them. But we generally have a pretty good idea how to solve them, and we're pretty sure we can if we decide to. So depending upon their importance in achieving the future that you wish to see occur, then if they are in that place, we do need to assign resources to, doing, to solving them, but we're pretty much assured of being able to do so. But then we have a third class of problems, which are known as wicked problems. Now, these are ones that we don't know how to solve. And often we've tried to solve, but they've proven too difficult. Um, it may be just the scale or the scope of them, but there's a range of different characteristics of wicked problems that um, give rise to the fact that we just haven't been able to solve them. And indeed, often we don't even know how to go about solving them. So they're often very difficult to define. Um, they're often very much interdependent of other issues and aspects and multidimensional. So it's not just one aspect we can tackle, but we have to tackle a whole range of aspects of the problem in order to solve it. Um, they can often lead to unforeseen circumstances because they're so complex and so interrelated with other issues. And there's no really clear, fast solution to them. We know that we want to achieve stuff, we know we want to solve it, but it's not really clearly defined exactly what we want to um, achieve. Generally that's because they're often mixed in with social issues um, and the complexity of humanity and all the issues related to social research. But there are elements that we can see in there. A lot of those have to do with behaviour or cultural change, which makes them more and more difficult to actually solve. Just as research on culture and behaviour and social issues is difficult, so is trying to change those issues. But if they can be changed, then generally they have a big effect. So identifying wicked problems is often an important aspect of trying to achieve the future that we want to see. Because solving these wicked problems are often the impediment towards the future that we would prefer. So identifying these issues and problems and working out ways to actually try to address them can be a significant aspect of your future's uh, research. So futures thinking involves considering all of these aspects, but sometimes it might be to go around the wicked problems. Um, so we may be able to get to the final outcome we want to see occur without necessarily solving the wicked problems. But sometimes they just may be so significant that we have to try to work out ways of actually addressing them. Now, as you go about conducting um, this sort of futures research, generally you start with not necessarily a literature review, but what we call an environmental scan. So this includes looking at the literature, but it also includes looking at what's been happening around these issues. So what's been happening with this educational technology in use in schools or in universities or um, by industry, uh, what companies are involved in producing this. So there could be a whole range of issues that aren't necessarily research-based in terms of literature that need to be considered. Now, we then need to look at the sources of data for this understanding. So it may be talking to your friends and family. It may be talking to experts. It may be looking at the literature. Often it involves looking at databases because remember, we're trying to look at trends of how things have been occurring and will then occur into the future. And getting some sort of numerical data about that is very useful. But it doesn't necessarily just have to be numerical. We can also get trends in other ways. We'll discuss that in a moment. So the first aspect of a future study is looking at the data sources we have available and how they relate to the problems that we're exploring in our understanding of the future and then trying to come up with some patterns 
in that data and then extrapolating those patterns into future trends and predictions, making forecasts, and then generating scenarios based upon those forecasts about what the future may be like if these things come to pass. So that's where we're at at the moment. What I'd like you to submit into Teams is your idea for an X problem related to education. So it's not the solution, it's a problem. Some sort of problem that needs to be addressed in order for your preferred future to come about. And share that into Teams.